Hello dear students, now we are going to derive the relation between N, U, V and R for a spherical refracting surface. N means refractive index, object distance, image distance and radius of curvature. Okay. So, since uh, we have uh, we should get refractive index N definitely we should use Snell's law here. Now, here you see we have considered one spherical refracting surface, this is a spherical refracting surface. Okay this is the principal axis. Here we have considered object, okay, point object, a ray which goes and hits the spherical refracting surface, it suffers a refraction okay, and here the image is formed. Okay. Here I name this angle as alpha. Okay. What is this? This is the normal. Okay. This is the normal at the point of incidence. The normal always passes through the center of curvature, we know this. Okay. I name this angle as alpha, this is beta and this is gamma. The distance between pole and the center of curvature is r. Okay. The distance between the pole and the image is image distance v. The distance between object and the pole is u, we know this. Okay. And here what we have done, we have considered a ray which is going from rarer medium to denser medium. Refractive index of the rarer medium let it be n 1 refractive index of denser medium let it be n 2. Now, uh, we will see how to derive it. Now, here what I will do, I will define tan alpha. So, what is what is tan alpha? Tan alpha is equal to tan alpha is equal to see n p divided by O p opposite side divided by adjacent side n p divided by O p. Okay. Similarly, I will define tan beta, tan beta. So, what is tan beta? This is the right angle triangle tan beta is equal to n p divided by p c, n p divided by p c. Similarly, I, I define tan gamma tan gamma is equal to what is tan gamma n p divided by p i n p divided by p i. So, here what I have done is I have considered a paraxial ray. What do you mean by paraxial ray? A ray which is very close to the principal axis okay, and it should be parallel to the principal axis. Means, in principle while deriving this alpha, beta, gamma all these angles are very small, but you have to show it in the diagram now that is why we have given some elevation. Okay. So, n p divided by p i okay. and if the angles are very very small, okay, if theta is very very small then we know that tan theta is approximately equal to theta. So, therefore, what happens? I okay, will write for, for paraxial rays for paraxial rays, okay. tan alpha will be approximately equal to alpha itself. So, therefore, what I can write? Alpha is equal to n p divided by o p. Okay. Similarly, beta is equal to n p divided by p c okay. and gamma, gamma is equal to n p divided by p i, n p divided by p i. Now, we will see what is Snell's law. What is Snell's law? According to Snell's law, we have, okay, I will write Snell's law. According to Snell's law, we can write n 1 sin i, okay, n 1 sin i is equal to n 2 sin r, n 1 sin i is equal to n 2 sin r. Okay. Now, I need to know what is i and r. So, therefore, I should write angle of incidence i, okay, this is angle of incidence and this is angle of refraction, angle of incidence and angle of refraction in terms of alpha, beta and gamma, because I know what is alpha, what is beta and what is gamma. Okay. So, therefore, what I will do, I will do this uh, uh, calculation here, okay. what I will do. So, if you look at the triangle, if you look at the triangle N O C, okay. When you look at the triangle NOC, okay, when you look at the triangle NOC, okay, I is the exterior angle. So, we know that 
exterior angle is equal to sum of opposite interior angles. Okay. So, this is exterior angle sum of opposite interior angles alpha and beta. Okay. Therefore, I can write angle of incidence i is equal to alpha plus beta one thing. Then I will define r see where is r this is r. Okay. Now, if you when you look at the uh, triangle C and I, when you look at the triangle C and I, C and I, this beta is the exterior angle. Okay, so therefore I can write beta, beta is equal to R plus gamma, beta is equal to R plus gamma, beta is equal to R plus gamma. So now I have defined. Uh, um, Okay, or I can write this as R angle of refraction R is equal to beta minus gamma R is equal to beta minus gamma. Now, I know what is I and what is R. Now, I can substitute here and one more thing is we have considered paraxial rays. For paraxial rays since the angles are very very small tan theta is approximately equal to theta and sin theta is also approximately equal to theta. So, therefore, what I can write I can write sin I is equal to I sin r is equal to r. So, therefore, this equation becomes n 1 i becomes equal to n 2 r n 1 i is equal to n 2 r. I okay. will write it here n 1 i is equal to n 2 r. I will substitute for i and r. So, n 1 into okay. what is i? i is equal to alpha plus beta alpha plus beta plus n 2 into r sorry. So, this is equal to here okay. <coughs> equal to n 2 into what is r? r means beta minus gamma okay. beta minus gamma. Now, I will substitute for alpha, beta and all. Okay. So, what is alpha? Alpha equal to n p by o p n 1 into alpha means n p by o p plus what is beta? Beta means n p by p c n p by p c is equal to n into again beta, beta means n p by p c n p by p c minus gamma what is gamma? n p by p i n p by p i. Okay. Now, what happens here is, see this M, N p is common everywhere, you can remove it. Okay. So, I can write N 1 by O p is equal to sorry plus plus N 1 by p c, N 1 by p c, this N p is not there here cancelled and I brought this N 1 inside is equal to, see this is N 2 here correct na? N 2 here n 2 into n 2 into uh, or n p got cancelled. So, n 2 by p c n 2 by p c minus n 2 by p i. Okay. Now, from the diagram we will see what is o p, what is p c, okay. what is p i. Okay. What is o p? O p means object distance. Okay, object distance uh, you have to take minus u, y minus u, you have to measure it from the pole direction of incident light is opposite. So, O p means minus u, okay. O p means minus u, I will write it here, O p means minus u. What is P c? P c means radius of curvature. Okay. What is P c? P c means radius of curvature, okay. you have to measure from the pole. Okay. So, radius of curvature is plus p i means image distance. So, that is also plus because it is in the in the direction of incident light. So, the measurement is in the direction of incident light. So, what to do? P c means in the place of P c I substitute r, in the place of P i I should substitute v. So, what happens we will see n 1 n 1 divided by minus u okay, plus n 1 by r is equal to n 2 by p c, p c means r okay, minus n 2 by v. 
Now, what I will do? I will shift this to uh, LHS what happens? It becomes plus n 2 by v ok n 2 plus n 2 by v minus n 1 by u minus n 1 by u is equal to is equal to n 2 minus n 1 divided by r because this comes here it will become minus n 1 by r denominator is same ok. So, what do you get n 2 by v minus n 1 by u is equal to n 2 minus n 1 divided by r. So, this is the relation between n v u and r. So, how to remember this easily? See this is v is image distance n 2 is the refractive index n 2 is the refractive index of the medium in which image is there. Image is there in n 2 object is there in n 1. So, how to remember refractive index of image space divided by image distance minus refractive index of object space divided by object distance is equal to n 2 minus n 1 divided by r. So, here remembering uh, LHS refractive index of image space divided by image distance minus refractive index of object space divided by object distance. You, you remember this because it will be useful while deriving a lens makers formula. Okay. Thank you very much.